Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for being here to honor my great grand uncle Jacob Rupert Jr. I'm sure Uncle Jacob would be extremely proud and honored to know that he was about to become a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame, along with Hank O'Day and Deacon White. I'd like to give a special thank you to the pre-integration committee for electing Jacob Rupert to the class of 2013. Additionally, I'd like to offer a sincere thank you to Jane Forbes Clark, the chairman of the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, and all the other very hardworking board members. Also, a special thank you to Jeff Edelson, president of the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, and all the amazing staff that have made myself, my family, my extended friends and cousins just feel just amazingly welcome. It's truly the best experience of our lives. Um, also, I want to note that without all these people, I don't think the Baseball Hall of Fame would be what it is, which is a, an extraordinary resource and a goal for people from all corners of the world to strive for, whether to visit or eventually to become a member. I'm extremely honored to be in Cooperstown at the Baseball Hall of Fame as a representative for my family to honor the Colonel. My great granduncle Jacob was born about 90 years before myself in 1867. Unfortunately, I never had the opportunity to know him. However, stories were told about the New York Yankees and my energetic uncle. And they were told to all of, all of us at a very early age. I'm related to Jacob Rupert through my grandmother, Cornelia Rupert, who was a niece to Jacob Rupert. Uma, as we called her, uh, married my grandfather, Murray Vernon. And it was through my grandmother, Cornelia, my grandfather, Murray, my father, Rupert Vernon, who is deceased, and my uncle, Murray Vernon, who is alive but unfortunately can't be here due to illness in Georgia. We were told all sorts of stories about my great uncle, and they were rather exciting, sometimes colorful, and always energetic. It was a wonderful opportunity as young children to hear about it. What, but I'm going to talk to you about my point of view as growing up as a child and myself as a parent with the Yankees and how it really affected our family and baseball. My grandfather used to take me and my two younger siblings, Rupert and Rosamond, without our parents fishing when we were very, very young. The best fishing trips were always during the fall, during playoff season, and of course, in the midst of World Series. Pop-up, as we called him, would pack his Jacob Knickerbocker beer for himself, Coca-Cola for his three grandkids, ham and Swiss cheese sandwiches, rotisserie chicken, and Pepperidge Farm cookies. We would then anchor the boat in a quiet little spot so Pop-up could turn on the radio right away and catch the game, and maybe a few fish. There was no talking when the game was on, though we could cheer when the crowd cheered and the announcer discussed things and told us to yell from the stands. We could also cheer if we caught a fish that was bigger than the last one. My grandfather would keep a careful eye on us, but a keen ear to the radio broadcaster. Such amazing cherished memories of baseball. My children, all four of them, played t-ball, little league, Furthermore, I dare to say they were as talented in this wonderful area of baseball as my great grand, grand uncle Jacob was deemed. They were average in this area, but they loved it. One memory that stands out among the countless years of being a baseball mom was attending the first day of Little League for my oldest son, Nicholas, when he's about, I think, in seventh grade. The young players had gathered at their field. The parents were gathered there with the boys for the first practice and in walked the coach. The coach introduced himself and told us his story, which according to my re recollection goes this way. Coach explained that he was born in Vietnam and came back at the end of the war. Then he went on to explain how baseball saved his life. As a young child, he lived as an adopted child, moving from place to place. And it wasn't always welcome from a child from that time and that background. But, however, he was a very quick runner. 
a hard worker, a decent batter, and it was through baseball he was able to make friends and learn a lot about life. The coach then went on to explain how baseball taught him everything he ever needed to know to succeed. Teamwork, self-confidence, and working through slumps. Then he used a beautiful analogy, which I'm sure I will not get as accurately, about how each position on the team teaches you something. And each boy, by the way, would learn and try each position. He really wanted to teach these young athletes about the game and how to grow as young men in this world. Next, the coach told the boys that they had to make the personal commitment to their team. It was the boys' responsibility to get to and from practice and to work hard. A different perspective compared to some coaches today, I venture to say. An amazing coach who really made a big difference in our family and in my son's life. What an amazing game, baseball. And as all know, many players, professional sandlot, learn numerous, numerous lessons through playing baseball. In closing, and as the representative for my uncle, I want to thank you all. My family, my friends, the audience, the fans, especially the ones here from cheering for the New York Yankees. Yeah, Yankees. Past Hall of Fame classes, the pre-inauguration committee, Jane Forbes Clark, the entire board of directors of the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, Jeff Edelson, and the staff of the National Baseball Hall of Fame for bestowing this great, great honor to my great-granduncle, Jacob Rupert, Jr. And thank you all so very, very much for listening to me, and have a great day. All the best. Thank you.